It's the Voice Coach Podcast with me, Nick Redman, your own personal voice geek ready to guide you through getting the most out of your speaking voice. If you use your voice for a living as an actor, podcaster, voice artist, speaker or presenter, then this is the podcast for you. Let's crack on. Hi, Voice Chum. Welcome back. I hope you had uh, a lovely week of speaking only in vowels or (laughs) O-E-E-I-W-A. Did your family disown you yet? That would be my question. Yeah, mine did a long time ago, uh, but that's probably mainly to do with the gurning exercises I do to warm my face up. Good times. Anyway, this week we're back with exploring the consonants now this time, all on their own EO, just like you did with the vowels, and how they can add to the clarity and the expression of the text or the words that you have to present or record or whatever it is you do with your words. This week is sort of where you get to feel like a novice beatboxer. Wicka, wicka, wah! Uh, <laughs> you may feel like your lips and tongue want to fall off. Happy days. But sure, it's all in the name of communicating clearly and expressively, eh? For the sake of continuity as well and ease, I thought I would use the same words and phrases we did for the vowels only episode, the last one, so that we can really have a good feel for how exploring both elements can help on those words. So just as a reminder, we use the word feet, the word mouth, uh, the, the multisyllabic word syllable and the phrase, shall I compare thee to a summer's day? And then I did a little kind of podcasty and corporate version as well, in case you are not a fan of William Shakespeare. Right, let's start with the consonants only on feet then. So again, remember, it's the sounds they make, not the letters separately, because just like vowels, different combinations of consonant letters in different word contexts make different sounds. So, for example, the T in feet on the end can be a T. That's just a simple plosive, fine. But if you put that next to a H, uh, yes, I say H, sue me, <laughs> it becomes F. And, of course, depending on the word that that th sound is in, it can be what's called either voiced, so with vocal fold vibrations, or unvoiced, with no vocal fold vibrations, i.e. this, which is voiced on the th, or think, which is unvoiced on the th. And if you need to sort of feel the difference between those two, pop your hand very gently on the front of your throat, just where your larynx, Adam's apple, bumpy bit underneath your double chins area on your <laughs> front of your throat is. And you can feel on th- this, you can feel the buzzing behind there. Or th- think, you can feel no buzzing. So that's voiced and unvoiced. And consonants come in voiced and unvoiced pairs a lot of the time. We'll maybe get to that next time. So here we go. Back to feet. <clears> that's a weird one. So in feet we have the letters... F and T. Those are the consonants that we can see. But we're not going to go F and T. We're going to go F and T. That's a great example of the the different qualities of a fricative sound and a plosive sound, actually, and how they feel in the mouth. F, T, F, T, F, T, F, T. Then we've got mouth. So that's an M. Mmm, grand. That always feels nice, doesn't it? Like you've just eaten something good. Mmm, really buzzy on the lips. Feel the buzz on the lips with that one. Mmm. And then it's our TH, th, unvoiced at the end of mouth, so no vocal fold vibrations. Th, so we get mmm, th, mmm, th. Lovely. So that's ft and mmm, th. And then we got our multi syllable word, syllable. <laughs> I still love that I chose that. Breaking that down, we've got an S, two L's, which is still one L sound really when you speak it, a B and another L. We've got an S, two L's next to each other, which is sort of one sound of an L, a B and then an L. So that's S, L, B, L. Remembering, you know, that the sound that comes from the consonant letter Y as written on the page is actually a vowel sound, I. In that word, sil, si, e, syllable. So we don't include y because it's sounds, not letters. So s, l, s, l. They have quite different feels. The s is kind of hissy and luxurious. 
sometimes gets a bit sibilant, which might be a word that you recognise, and the ooh feels quite full in my mouth, really. So we get this ooh, s, ooh. Then we get the b, b. That's a lovely bouncy plosive, b, voiced, b, bouncy. And then back to the ooh at the end, which, depending on your accent, may feel like a different sort of L to the first L. So that's an interesting thing to notice because L kind of exists on like a sliding spectrum from what's sometimes known as heavy or dark, l, l, to light, l, l. So that's fun to notice. So we've got ft, ft, mth, mth, and slb, l, slb, l, slb, l. <laughs> and this is where we start to feel a little bit like a wicka wicka wah beatboxer. Oh my God, any beatboxers listening to this is going to hate me. <laughs> Let's go into that longer phrase. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? So we get sh l k m p r v t s m r s d. And this is where you start to feel like the worst rapper out there. <laughs> There's loads of different qualities in there. We've got fricatives, plosives, more m mm sounds, l sounds. And of course, depending on your accent, you may or may not have an R sound, that R at the end of compare and summer. So if you don't usually say compare or summer with the R sound at the end, then don't put that in because some accents might say summer or compare or summer, compare, whatever it happens to be. So if you don't put the R in, don't put the R in. Now lean into these sounds again and really feel them. Use them. Honour their position in the words. Just really pay attention to them. Like which ones feel like they're really needed? or important, or valuable, which ones feel nice for you, feel exciting, like tangible, and which feel like they may not be hugely important when you put the vowels back in. Actually, that's a really good way of deciding, is putting the vowels back in and seeing how it all links together. So let's put the vowels back in that we did the work on last time. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? So I feel like I need the sh at the top. The l, l links wonderfully to that longer I sound. Shall I, shall I, like a little bounce. Shall I? Then I really want to feel the bounce in the middle of that phrase from the k and the p before I go into the longer th, e sound. So I get that kind of shall I compare thee to a summer's day? And then we get that lovely time to lean into summers after the the, because we don't really feel like we need the two ah uh, that much. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? And feeling the different sounds we get on those two s's on summers. One is a s and one is a z. So again, that's a voiced and unvoiced pair of, of um fricative consonants. Summers, summers, that z feels lovely really buzzy like a bee in the summer <laughs> if we want to get really imagey about it. So then we get shall I compare thee to a summer's day and it feels lovely and clear and imbued with some emotional value from those vowels too rather than just going shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Just really using the sounds in there. And you may feel like it's too far, you may feel like it's not enough, but push it, have a play, see what everything feels like. That's what this is all about. And again, to put that into other contexts now, of course, we had a food podcast last time, didn't we, that I made up and there was an oozy gooey cake and we really had that repetition of the ooey and goo oozy cake. And now we can think about what the consonants bring. So we get a z, z, z sound in there and we get a g, g in the gooey and we get a k. A double k in cake. So we get that oozy, gooey cake. So I feel like you get oozy and the lovely z on the end, oozy. And that allows us to really feel that e sound on the y as well. And then gooey, gooey feels a bit more kind of bouncy and squishier. Oozy, really, almost like it's oozing off the cake and all around the cake. And then gooey is something that's slightly stickier and slightly more 
malleable, gooey, 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 and then cake is where we can get exciting with those plosives, cake, because everyone loves a bit of cake. You know, well, you might not like cake, who am I to judge? But let's imagine we do, because we're doing a food podcast (laughs) in this make-believe world. The oozy and gooey cake. Oozy and gooey cake. That's lovely. It just feels so nice. And then, of course, that corporate world example I set up with the idea that you might have to say something that may seem boring or not exciting to people or maybe bad news or something that you really need to hammer home in terms of a message with that we've seen a 50% increase in expenditure line. And we did the we, e, e, have seen a 50% increase and really used the E sounds to give some emphasis to certain syllables. What about the consonants? What do they bring? We've seen a 50, 50, 50. So we get that lovely ft from feet, 50%. 50%. And we can use the T on the end of percent just to really hammer home how much that is. We've seen a 50% increase, increase in expenditure. And expenditure is a lovely kind of succession of penditure. We get the expenditure. So we're like a nice amount of kind of bouncy plosives in there just to really propel us along that big word. So we can use those consonants to give us emphasis in terms of the most important points of the phrase and we can also use it to give us rhythm to keep things going. We've seen a 50% increase in expenditure. Has a really nice rhythm to it rather than we've seen a 50% increase in expenditure or we've seen a 50% increase in expenditure. It's finding ways to express this stuff and get your point across in an authentic and interesting and expressive way. Not in the way that feels inauthentic or awkward or that feels apologetic. Right, there we go. So this is an exercise that can take a bit of time to get used to. And I'd love to know what you think. Like someone sent me an email after a session this week to say they'd find the exercises that we'd covered really useful straight away, which is amazing to hear and helps me know that that particular bit of work was valuable. And that's a really useful thing for me to know. So if you're finding it useful, do let me know. And similarly, if you have a few questions or whatever, just pop me a DM on Instagram. I'm at Nick Red Voice and we can have a wee chat. Oh, and don't forget to book in a wee natter with me if you'd like to come to the next Ultimate Voice Getaway Retreat from the 6th to the 9th of May, 2022. There's a link in the bio to book in and I'm chatting to people for the next week or so. So do get in there if you want a wee chat, if you'd like to come. It does tend to sell out. So the sooner you can do that, the better. That's it for now. I'll see you in the next episode. Enjoy your consonants. Thanks for listening to the Voice Coach Podcast. For even more tips, tricks, exercises and general crack, head over to our Facebook community, The Voice and Accent Hub. Thanks again.